Greetings to all and sundry. Welcome to my YouTube channel Step Up. Today I'm back with another insightful video on how to talk about common phenomena and occurrences. We cannot deny a fact that this world is imbued with a number of common phenomena and occurrences, the count of which is limitless. But today, through this video, I'll be teaching 10 powerful, mighty words that royally encapsulate 10 crucial occurrences of this world. To begin with, let me quote Robert Lewis Stevenson. Robert Lewis Stevenson once very popularly remarked that, this world is so full of a number of things that we all should be as happy as kings. Now this was a very inconclusive statement that Robert Lewis Stevenson ever made because there are two drawbacks of this sentence when he said that this world is so full of a number of things that we all should be as happy as kings. Number one, the limitation of this sentence is happiness doesn't come from outside, it is an inside affair. And number two, kings are not necessarily happy but yes i would go with robert lewis stevenson to this extent and no further that this world is full of a number of things let us begin number one is penury what is penury the people who live in penury they cannot afford basic biogenic needs they live in such reduced circumstances that they cannot e afford even basic biogenic needs and there are three basic biogenic needs we know food shelter and clothing so these people who live in penury are not poor but they are the people who cannot afford one square meal a day they don't have proper clothes to cover their body they don't have shelter under which they can sleep or at least uh, you know survive so these people they live in penury so what is penury penury means extreme poverty abysmal poverty destitution we cannot call poverty a penury penury is more extreme it is more uh, abysmal abject all right so abject poverty is called penury this is the first word second common phenomena or occurrence of this world is vicarious now what is vicarious vicarious means derived or second-hand emotions now let us say uh, if you are a wrestling enthusiast if you are a wwe aficionado and you are watching a wrestlemania match between the undertaker and brock lesler and you're watching this match with utmost attention and uh, you know profound passion and interest you are at the edge of your seat while watching this match and this both wrestlers the undertaker and brock lesler are uh, fighting ferociously they are being for each other's blood and at the end of 45 minutes long duel the undertaker finally wins and you what do you do you also shout in victory but then before that you get tired actually you let out a long gasp uh, you know you exhale loudly and you say the undertaker won the undertaker undertaker jeet gaya yaar undertaker to jeet gaya par tu kyu thak gaya you did not fight in the first place with the brock lesnar did you no but why did you get tired you got tired because you derived that fatigue so that was a vicarious fatigue that actually uh, grabs you all right so vicarious means second hand or derived the third word is ephemeral anything that lasts for a few hours or for a short period of time is ephemeral so what is ephemeral ephemeral means short-lived temporary a sage or a saint will not hanker after ephemeral pleasures of this world most of the food items that we eat most of the sense pleasures they are ephemeral short-lived 
ephemeral solutions are short-lived solutions. So ephemeral is fleeting, transient, temporary. Okay. The fourth word is euphemism. Now what is euphemism? Euphemism means polite or uh, good words used to describe things offensive or harsh. We do not say old people. What do we say? We use a euphemism called senior citizen. So senior citizen is a, is a euphemism for old people. We do not say someone has died. We say someone has passed away. If of course uh, you are a refined and you know cultured and civilized person, you use pass away and not die. You will not say go away to someone. You will say that I would really like to have a bit of quietitude and peace. So these all are euphemisms. Intimate relations we say. We don't say sensual relation or something else. No, intimacy, intimate. So intimate is a euphemism. Polite word used for things harsh. I never say to my students you are a slow learner or you are weak. Mediocre. Mediocre is a euphemism. It's a polite or good word for things harsh. We say washroom and not toilet. All right. So uh, polite words used for things harsh or offensive are called euphemisms. Kill him is very coarse and harsh. Rather, someone will say eliminate him. Eliminate is euphemism. The next common phenomena or occurrence of this world is badinage. Badinage, playful conversation, light talks is badinage. I'll give you an instance. Let's say I meet a friend of mine after 10 years. I see that after 10 years my friend has taken to smoking and uh, he's a good friend of mine. I tell him that, uh, hey buddy, you know, smoking is not good for health and he tells me, dare you sermonize me? Do you at all know what a cigarette is? I say, yes, I know, cigarette is a pinch of tobacco rolled in a piece of paper with fire on one end and fool on the other. Now he gets offended. He says, dare you call me a fool? I said, no, I didn't call you a fool. I just defined a cigarette. You asked me what a cigarette is. I just defined what a cigarette is. What's going on? This, then he will say, okay, yaar, chod, yes, sir, chal, hai, kuch baat karte hai. A badinage, banter. Playful conversation, light talks is called badinage. All right. So this was our fifth word, badinage. The sixth word is bovine. Bovine essentially means cow-like. Bovis. It has come from a Latin root called bovis. Cow-like. So there were many bovine characters in the movie Ice Age that I watched five years back. Bovine is cow-like, but it is also used metaphorically or figuratively in the context of certain people who are very dull, who are very placid, who are very passive, they are very inactive, okay? So if someone wears a very passive expression on face, every time you will obviously call him or her uh, a bovine person, you know? If you say a bovine person, obviously it is not a very good word, but yes, it is, um, you know, wearing a dull or bovine expression on face is a common phenomena. It's a common occurrence in this world. This was our sixth word. The seventh word happens to be an easy word, and this is nostalgia. And you know that nostalgia is a longing for the past. Remembrance of the past, reminiscence of the past is, is nostalgia, all right? Uh, you are on a business trip in a bullet train and you while going to the business destination you cross a locality wherein you have spent your childhood days obviously you will long there will be a longing in your heart for that place you will be connecting with that place with deep sense of emotion this is nostalgia many people tell nostalgia homesickness that's a partial meaning that's not untrue not untrue but it's partial right longing for the past is nostalgia the eighth word is cacophonous what is cacophonous it's cacophonous 
Now phone is sound and cacos is ugly, like cacography is ugly handwriting. Cacophonous is ugly, blaring, unpleasant, bad sound. Squeaking of a chalk against a green or a blackboard is a cacophonous sound. It is ear splitting, spine tingling, blaring, noise of a busy street traffic is cacophonous. All right. So cacophonous is unpleasant or bad sound. Honking is a cacophonous noise. Ninth, which is a common occurrence or common phenomena is uh, carnivorous. Carnivorous, who are carnivorous? It's an easy word, right? Flesh-eating animals are carnivorous animals. Omnivorous animals are animals eating both flesh and plants. And uh, herbivorous animals are the animals eating leaves or plants. So carnivorous is easy, I'll not be elucidating it more. That is uh, flesh or meat eating animals. The final word is the tenth word clandestine. Siddhartha left his home clandestinely and after uh, you know deep austerities and serious penances he became Buddha after a few years but he left his home clandestinely. There are many activities that we do in broad daylight but there are certain activities that are done well shrouded in secrecy. Dealing in narcotics is a clandestine act. Bribing a police official is a clandestine act. Clandestine is secret, covert, isn't it? Hidden, that is clandestine. All right, so you understood? These were the 10 powerful words on the common phenomena and occurrences of this world. Hope these words will go a long way in um, uh, you know flourishing your personality and building your personality expression speech both oral and written stay tuned share subscribe and like to my videos i'll be coming with more such videos uh, till then nimis tucker signs out goodbye love you all